days, as somebody said earlier. So it was one month ago today, August 10th, that Kelsey Hogan was formally named the head coach of her alma mater. And I don't think anybody personifies once a wildcat, always a wildcat like Coach Hogan, because once you came, Kelsey, you never left. And so now you have the job as the head coach of your alma mater. We welcome you in formally here, and I know you have to kind of do it differently than all your predecessors here during the COVID pandemic, but welcome to the head coaching role. Well, thank you, Murph, and uh, a big thank you to all of you joining us tonight. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, I tell you, we, we always talk even just with the team, but uh, we're getting a little zoomed out, but I, I think we're taking full advantage, too, of just this time and, and getting connected. So really appreciating this for sure. Um, so thank you all so much. I'm, I'm just, even with this kind of month with being on the job, it still feels bittersweet. Um, I, I, I'm still just really excited about this opportunity and, and feeling really grateful to be able to continue with the young ladies that we have um, on our team um, and just to continue to work for a university that, you know, is, is really close to my heart and means so much to me. We're going to meet some members of the team in a few minutes. We'll also hear from the director of athletics, Marty Scarano. But I, I, why is Kelsey Hogan the head coach of this team? You weren't given the job just because you've been here a lot. Time. I think it's important now people recognize you as a player, recognize you as an assistant coach for six years, but who is Kelsey Hogan, the head coach? Why was this the right choice for this school? Yeah, um, Kelsey Hogan, she's, she's hardworking. Um, we do it, as I, as I kind of talked about, gosh, I feel like in the press conference, just doing it the Wildcat way. Um, I feel like I definitely am a proud Wildcat, but I exemplify um, many qualities. Um, to fit into the Wildcat family that we have right now. But I'm definitely hard, a hard worker um, with that too. I'm tough, gritty, competitor, very passionate about this program and university. Um, and, and I'm proud of that. Uh, but moving forward, Kelsey Hogan, Hogan what kind of coach is she? She's, she's a teacher first, uh, moving forward and, and always pushing to be that mentor. Um, and through this whole time of being UNH, I've had tremendous mentors um, along my journey here. And I'm so grateful to continue to have those mentors still in my new role. Um, and then just to continue to still use those mentors, just to continue to help me grow into this new role and this new opportunity. I'm sure there's a part of you, maybe a lot of you, that wants to hit the ground running, get your culture established, and really get going, but yet you have to immediately learn discipline, patience, and deal with the protocols. How has it been since the student athletes have come back to campus in trying to implement whatever 2020, 2021 will look like? Well, I mean, our student athletes right now on this call too, they can attest to it. They can, uh, uh, they're itching just to be on the court together. Uh, we actually started this week that uh, we started some walkthroughs just to go over kind of what our new system's gonna look like. Um, but they can see, they can see me itching just to get back and, and back to work with them. And, and I, and I love that they're, they're troopers. They are just in such a great mindset right now. They're motivated. They're ready to get to work. Uh, so that even motivates me even more, uh, just to see how engaged and great they've been this week, even just with our first week, starting with, uh, lifts, actually our lifts, our first lift was Wednesday. We're doing it Wednesday and Friday this week. Um, as I said, we were doing some walkthroughs and it's walkthroughs without a basketball and we're all keeping our distance, masked up, um, everything like that, but we're finding a way just to continue to grow together during this, um, this uh, pandemic and, and this crazy time, we're trying to figure out what the new norm, norm is and just to continue to grow together to get to that vision that we all have for this program moving forward. The university has done a tremendous job in communicating leading up to when school started, all the new policies that would be in place, wearing masks, social distancing. And as far as athletics goes, I thought our athletic training staff did a remarkable job of being sure everybody knew the rules has it been seamless because of the communication or has it been difficult adjusting in the early going? I tell you the communication has been great. It's been key with all this. Um, even before the student athletes got to campus, just what uh, staff members like ourselves were supposed to be doing, we were getting tested weekly um, in that protocol. I mean, 
I tell you, I think we have top notch testing right now because we do have testing capability right on campus. So the turnaround has been great. Uh, we've actually now with the students being on campus, they're getting tested twice a week and that turnaround just has been great. Um, I mean, I know some other people on this call can attest to the numbers that we've had. And yes, we've been in the news for some other uncertainties, but outside of athletics, but for the most part, our numbers have been great. So our protocol um, and the communication has been awesome. And I think it's been key and that's why we've been successful so far. Um, and I also attest, um, of course, the all, uh, gosh, we thank and appreciate all those people that have been on the committee and worked so hard to get that communication out. But I attest to, to the student athletes because they really are buying into doing the right thing um, and really leading by example through the university too of, of taking really it seriously, making sure we, we're representing um, and doing the right thing always. So I, I honestly give it up for them too through this time. And it isn't like you have the entire team in the gym at once at any time soon, right? There are limitations as to how many people can be anywhere from the Jerry Azuma Performance Center to in the gym at any time. That's important, I think, for the alums and fans to realize everything is counted, you know, where you're standing, how you're acting. So it is a testament to the student athletes and the staff that they are, everybody's adhering to the rules. Murph, I tell you, I wish we could be all in, a group, uh, all in the gym together. Uh, I can't wait just to get to the gym um, all together to get some noise, some energy back in there. I keep saying some juice in there, um, but it's not the case. We're in small pods. As I said, uh, the ladies just started lifting this week. And with that, uh, they come, they get checked in. They know that even their lifting time is at a certain time, but they have to come 15 minutes before. Um, we have groups of six, so we have one group of six, one group of seven right now, and we kind of manage that too of the ones that are living in the dorms and then the ones that are living off campus. So they're in little pods together um, and they come in for lift 15 minutes before to get checked in and then they stand in the, in the lobby of the field house on their li little number. They actually have little numbers um, and we joke a little bit of kind of it being almost like uh, elementary school again, but that's kind of the case. We get in a straight line, we keep our six feet, and, and we make our way down to uh, the weight room. Um, but I tell you, it's the protocol we have to do um, to get our, our ladies, you know, back in tip-top shape to compete. Um, hopefully sooner rather than later, we'll figure that out and we'll find that out with the NCA. Uh, but I said, they'll be there, they've been troopers with it all. Um, they're buying into it, and uh, they're, they're sticking to it. They're being positive. They're being positive, being optimistic, and, and, and doing what, what is right at this time. So, What has your message been? Because normally when you're ramping up, it's okay. Let's make sure everybody's in shape. Let's figure out our positions, and then we're counting down to a certain date. We don't have that date right now as to when the opening game will be. So how are you delivering the message to the team to stay on task with the uncertainty out there? I think it's, it's the day to day, um, having them buy in to what we can control day in and day out. And it's taking one day at a time. Um, we talk about the future and of course our vision moving forward, have that buy in, but it's what we do on a daily basis. Um, and it's, as I keep saying, and, and the girls will, I'm sure laugh and I keep saying it's going to be a broken record this year, but it's doing the right thing. Um, and not just thinking about us, but thinking about others too, while we're doing it. Um, so uh, along those same lines, it's, it's continuing to buy in day in and day out of doing the right thing and controlling what we can control on a daily basis. That's that buy in. We're about to hear from the players in a few minutes, but first, can, can you give us an overview? Let's kind of break it down. I don't know if you want to do it by class or if it's by position that might start off with how's your backcourt looking as, again, it's early on. It isn't like you have your rotation set, but I'm sure in your mind, you're looking at these pieces of the puzzle and how they all might fit. I think that's what's so exciting, Murph, is that I've been around these ladies um, and, and the incoming freshman class. Um, being the recruiting coordinator, there's still some of my kids, there's still my kids there coming in. So I do um, know what we have, and I'm really excited about them. Um, we are going to be young again, but I don't want people to count us out because you know what? Our youth is definitely going to be our strength moving forward. Uh, we're going to be tough, we're going to be gritty. Um, and as I said, that kind of is the formula, the Wildcat way. Um, but kind of just do positions, breakdown, uh, just to make sure I don't 
forget any single amazing lady that we have on the team, but our primary ball handlers um, that we have even coming back and newcomers, but coming back, we have Amanda Torres, uh, Lena Deluruel, um, Sarah Serbasiewicz, and then we go into our shooting guards and we have Lexi Griffin, uh, Melissa Girdon, and Callie Grimm, and a newcomer is Adar Groman. And then our swings or stretches, and that kind of talks a little bit into our new style of play in our offense. Uh, we have Bella Stewart, who is a newcomer, incoming freshman, uh, Brooke Kane, Mariah Gonzalez, and then our post players. We have newcomer who's on here today, uh, Paige Cody, and Faith Bonet here, and then Ivy Gogolin. So we actually, we got you guys the three post players are on this call today. Yeah, I guess we, you love your bigs. You're going to get out here and talk. That's great. <laughs> and, and, you know, I was, is my math right that when you started at UNH, it was during a transition when Coach Maureen McGarity became the head coach. Now, everybody knows you. You said recruiting. But the fact that you're a head coach, there are a lot of kids who were not recruited by you as a head coach. You experienced that as a student athlete, correct? Yes. Yeah. So that's got to be an advantage, I would think, for, in, in the sense that you know what it's like to be in their shoes. I think so, absolutely. Um, and especially, never mind in their shoes, but in the shoe in their shoes at such a special place uh, as UNH. Um, so I think that is a strength of mine for sure, and it will be. It, it, they'll probably be sick and tired of hearing that as a broken record. Of I understand, I've been there, uh, but how can we continue to grow and move forward? They're probably gonna get sick and tired of hearing that, but absolutely, I can attest to it. Yes. Well, you're right. They're sick and tired of hearing from you, so we're going to give you a break for a few minutes. Let's bring some of them in. I'm going to start with your senior, Amanda Torres. And Amanda, if you think other people are tired of hearing about Kelsey Hogan, we can't help but compare you to Kelsey. You're a New Hampshire born, New Hampshire bred, a guard. You stayed in state to play your college basketball. And now you see Kelsey Hogan, who's from Nashville and did the same thing, become the head coach for your senior year. What does that mean to you to see how her – story has been told and now she's in charge of this program yeah I mean I'm super thrilled to have Kelsey as her coach I mean I grew up in the town next to Nashua so like I grew up hearing about her and even when like I committed here like the first thing my dad was talking about was about Kelsey and how great of a player she was and everything um so I'm definitely super excited for her and I think she deserves it and we've had a great um, bond these last three years her being my guard coach and just she's been there for me on, on and off the court so I'm definitely um, super excited to have her as our coach and um, see what she can do. This is senior year you are the yeah. senior on this team it, it, does it seem incredible that it's gone by this quickly and all of a sudden you are the senior leader? Yeah it's definitely crazy I feel like I think about it and I feel like just yesterday I was a freshman like it went by faster than I ever would have thought. And what does it mean to you to be a senior? What is senior leadership and how do you plan to serve in that role both on the court and I'm sure in the locker room? Yeah I mean I think it's definitely my biggest step is going to be being more vocal. I'm definitely one of the ones to always like sit back and let other people talk. Um, so I think my biggest like personal goal as a senior is to just be more outgoing and make sure I am on the court and off the court and just be the best leader um, I can be for my teammates and by being a good example on the court and off the court, especially with um, having COVID, we definitely have stricter things we have to be careful about and just being the best I can be so then my teammates can be that too. Everyone's going through the same challenges, but you being in your fourth year on campus, how is it more challenging this fall than previously um I think definitely basketball wise just the unknown like knowing are we gonna have a season like when is it gonna start like we're all just like wanting to get back on the court since we missed summer um basketball and everything so I think the hard hardest part has definitely been like waiting to be able to practice again like we're used to just coming back and like workouts right away um so that has definitely been the biggest adjustment and I realize I should have started by having you say this, but what is your hometown? What is your major? Um, my major is, I'm doing a dual major, human development and family studies with education. And um, my hometown's Hudson, but New Hampshire, but I just moved to Nashua a few months ago. So you were Bronco or what? Um, no, I actually went to Trinity in Manchester. Oh, Pioneer. And then, 
and then I went to prep school, so. Gotcha. Uh, you're a wild cat for the rest of your life, which is important. Yeah. Thing, so. All right, thanks, Amanda. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right, now we switch over to Ivy Goblin. So Ivy, I'll start the way I should have started with Amanda. Give us your, your, your year, position, hometown, and major, please. All right, so I'm a junior this year. I'm from Hopkinton, Mass, and I'm majoring in business analytics and management. So now you're officially an upperclassman. Like, isn't there, a, when you switch from sophomore to junior, there's gotta be some kind of switch. Okay, all of a sudden, I'm not new anymore. I have to be more of a force. How do you plan to be more of a front court presence this year? Yeah, definitely. I think moving into that upperclassman role is a, is a jump, which I think I'm ready for, and a lot of my classmates are as well. Um, we definitely have some big shoes to fill with the seniors that graduated, but we've been putting in work in this off season. Um, and like Kelsey was talking about, we have a new offense, a new system coming in that's going to allow everyone to play to their strengths a little better, I think. Um, so we've all been working on our game, and I'm really excited to see how it all comes together. So were you in Massachusetts over the summer? Yes. Knowing that the numbers have been down in this area, but there were some strict lockdowns. How did you overcome some of those challenges in keeping in shape and staying focused on basketball over the summer? Yeah, so for that, I'd have to give the credit to the coaches. So Peyton and Kelsey were right on it. They didn't miss a beat. They sent us workouts to do in our driveway or at a local outdoor court or something. Um, so we had workouts to do that gave us individual things to work on and goals to work towards. Um, and I think we all bought in and did the work in this off season, and it's going to pay off. So we definitely... We also got workouts from our strength coach, Adam, sent us strength and conditioning workouts to keep that going as well. So I think we stayed on top of it as our coaches kind of led us and gave us things to do. In just a moment or two, we're going to meet Paige Cody, a freshman on this team, and I'm sure she's thinking about how am I going to match up and practice against Ivy. Well, you can give her some tips based. How was it to deal with Ashley's story, and how did she make you a better player going against her and competing in practice for these years? Yeah, I mean, it's no secret. Ashley was an amazing player and a great leader on and off the court. Um, she definitely pushed me to play up to her higher level right off the bat, which I think benefited me uh, tremendously, um, having to guard her and be guarded by her. Um, I definitely learned a lot. Um, she had a great way of pushing all of us in a positive way. So she would kind of let us know little tips that she'd picked up along the way so we could learn things faster. and. Um, just not be afraid to tell us we, what we could be doing better, but in a helpful way. Um, so I definitely want to keep that going, keep that tradition moving forward with Paige, any other posts, any other players, um, just being competitive, but also helpful and making each other better every day. Tremendous. You hear that, Paige? She's going to push you, so yeah. push you positively. That's great. Yeah. All right. Somebody else is going to be pushing you around in the paint is Faith Bonet. Faith. Catch us up to date. What is your year? What is your major? What's going on? Oh, I'm Faith Bonet. I am a red shirt sophomore, and my major is recreation management. And it's this, this is a hobby. I wish I had my shirt. I sound like such a, a fake, but just yesterday, Coach Hogan and I each had our together shirts that you designed. So for the kingdom, can you tell us about that? And it is a remarkable story for those who haven't followed. Yeah, so this summer, obviously, with all of the, well, I guess, sparking or starting with um, George Floyd's murder um, and then just like lots of social injustice issues that arose after that, um, I just wanted to do my part somehow. And I've always been really into art. And the sketch on the, on the Together shirts um, was just something I'd drawn up a few weeks before. And then I was looking at it and I'm like, well, I've always wanted to make some kind of like shirt or sweatshirt or something like that. And I was just like, I think the time is perfect right now. Um, just because standing together is the ultimate goal and everything that we should do in life. And I just thought that it was the perfect time to kind of just launch it and get it out there. So that was one of two designs that I had. The other one was empathy. And um, I went to a protest in my hometown and someone got up there and said that, like, I think a lot of the issues that we have are that we don't know the difference between empathy and sympathy. Like, oftentimes they're used as synonyms, but um, the definition of sympathy is to just 
basically have the mentality of, oh, wow, like, that stinks, I feel bad for them. But empathy is truly like having and feeling the emotions of another person and having the desire to want to feel those. So I just thought that that word was super important just for everything that's going on in our country right now. So I just wanted to make sure that the message that were on there were positive, but also something that is important for me personally. So yeah, I launched those and then the money made from um, those two collections went to a local like um, youth enrichment kind of organization. I don't know how to describe it, but basically like a youth development org um, that provides people with like college prep and just recreational activities um, in Camden, New Jersey, which is a town over from me, which is a uh, We've had, we had like a 30 for 30 or 60 minutes or something like that in like 2002 or 2008, um, just comparing our two towns because like it's two completely different um, financial backgrounds and everything. So there are lots of the kids there, um, they just come from broken homes or just they don't have a lot of access. And I had the opportunity to go there and deliver the check, which was over two thousand dollars which was awesome and i got to meet a lot of the kids so that was just probably the best part out of all of it like it's great seeing people wearing my stuff but getting to see those people and know who was being impacted is probably the best thing from that for sure truly remarkable and now that you're back on campus and you're a member of sac a co-vice president what is it that you would like to see this campus do to get together and help when it comes to social injustice um, I think that the biggest thing that for me at least is just like actively listening to other people, um, having the desire to want to hear people's stories or people's experiences or something as simple as like, how was your day? Um, just truly wanting to get to know people beyond just service level things, just because I feel like in our society, a lot of the time we tend to focus on the surface. Like we don't really try to get deep. It's usually like, how are you? I'm good. And then the conversation ends there. So I just think that starting more conversations, um, building more genuine relationships with people throughout the campus, whether you're an athlete or not, um, I definitely think that that's something that SAC wants to do. Um, we've talked about it even last year towards the end of the year, just bridging the gap between the field house and the rest of the campus, um, not having student athletes be kind of in their own bubble, which, well, COVID might be a little different, but um, just, not being like segregated in terms of like we're athletes, we're above people or anything like that. Just like knowing that we're athletes, we have a special platform and we have a special opportunity to set an example, but we're also college students like everyone else. So just bridging that gap and obviously just like working together to do those things too. All extremely important, as is the basketball side. So I didn't want to let you go before asking what do you think you work, what specific part of your game do you feel you made some strides in over the summer and we'll be delighted to see once the season begins? Um, yeah, I think that the biggest thing for me was the fact that I was able to go to my trainer. New Jersey was pretty locked down, so courts opened up September 1st, like indoor gyms and everything. So literally the week that I was here, they opened up. So I missed out on that, but I was able to go to my trainer and he has little indoor courts that I was able to sneak into and he specializes in shooting. So that's like his thing. He can shoot both hands right, left, like the shooter. Sorry, Kel. But um, <laughs> yeah, definitely my shot has like improved astronomically. Um, it's awesome just like seeing how much I've improved just like shooting with him versus last year, I was definitely hesitant to shoot just because like I grew up as a slasher, like basically on every team I've been on. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely more confident in my shot and ready to pull the trigger whenever necessary. <laughs> you have the green light, I can tell you right now. I can see it in Coach Hogan's eyes, green light for Faith Bonet this year. So thanks for coming on and uh, best of luck here this season. Thanks. Next up, we're going to our sophomore guard, Elena De La Ruel. Elena, where are you from? What's your major? Uh, so I am from Paris, and I'm studying engineering aerospace. Wow. Okay, and now it's sophomore year. So last year, with that incredible major, coming from a different country, 
being a freshman, playing college basketball, what were what was the most difficult part of that transition last year at this time? The language, I think, a lot. Like sometimes the coaches will talk and I'll be like, uh, <laughs> and try to get the girls and be like, what she say? <laughs> what we have to do? And I think it's um, physical too. Like they're more physical in America than in France. So get tougher, even the lift every day, and stuff like that. So you feel better now? Have a better grip on what they're saying? Even our English can be kind of broken when we talk? Yeah. I feel better. A little bit, but I feel better. <laughs> well, you certainly sold it well. I had no idea. But next thing is, how, how was it different in France dealing with COVID-19? We know it's a global pandemic, and we've heard New Jersey, Massachusetts, New Hampshire. What are some of the differences in France of how the coronavirus is being handled? But uh, in France, we quarantined for like two months there. And like when you get outside, you get a ticket. Like he couldn't go outside for two months, and after like they open like everything like stores, uh, cinema, like everything like week or on weeks. But I feel like uh, everybody's wearing masks. Everybody's a little bit scared, so everybody's super careful. Like, and if you don't have a mask, you get a ticket, so nobody won't pay. So so everybody's like staying at home and. Don't do a lot of stuff. And I, I, I know the answer to this one. Elena got zero tickets, right? You did a great job. You listened, right? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right, well, now you're into your second year, so naturally the expectations go up in, in what you're expected to do. Where do you think your game will see its most improvement in your sophomore year? I think being more a leader on the court, I like talking more and be more scorer, take my shot. Well, Faith's taking all the shots now, so we got to figure this out. All right, well, that, that's good. Leaders, shooters, if we can score from all parts of the court, all the better. So thanks, Elena, and welcome back for year two. Thank you. And now the freshman. She's had time to listen to everybody else, but Paige Cody comes from Sanford, Maine. She was the first player in school history to earn a Division I women's basketball scholarship. So Paige, welcome to UNH, and really what kind of accomplishment was that, just being number one in your school to get this kind of opportunity? Um, so that was really special for me and for my family. Um, but I think most importantly, I just wanted to set the example for the younger girls and just younger kids in my community in general. Um, especially being the first person, I felt like someone had to show that it is an attainable thing if you work hard, you know, make good choices that you can attain something like that. And it's not just some dream that's out of reach that you can actually do it. Well, you're here like two weeks or whatever it is so far. It must be kind of crazy. I know when I was a freshman and I had nothing else to do, I was, it was crazy just being on my own for the first time. But how has the adjustment been? New team, new school, and being ready to go? I mean, definitely with everything going on with COVID-19, it's been more challenging. But the team and the coaches have done such a great job of making the freshmen feel welcome, giving us things to do, making sure that we stay safe, um, just making sure that we feel welcome here as soon as we stepped onto campus. I know Kelsey and Peyton were right there when I was moving in, like within 10 minutes of my arrival. So definitely they've made us all feel really welcome. Well, we haven't seen you play. So can you describe your game and, and how you will contribute to the Wildcats this season? Yeah, so I'm primarily an inside player, but I'm definitely looking to expand my game a little bit. And I think that this, our new offense is definitely going to give me the opportunity to do that and kind of expand my game a little bit. Um, but just even in our first couple of walkthroughs, I definitely feel like this offense not only complements my game, but my teammates too. So I think it's going to be really good for us. And finally, why was it that you decided UNH was the, the right fit for you? Um, so to be honest, it was kind of instinctual as soon as I stepped onto campus, met the coaches, um, and I credit a lot of that to Kelsey. She definitely made me feel really welcome here. Um, just always calling me, texting me, checking in, um, seeing how I was doing, and that was really important. And also, my teammates were super welcoming when I met them the first time. And that's also pretty close to home for me, which is nice. So my family and friends can come see my games, hopefully at some point in the future, but yeah. And what's your major? Uh, business administration.
You came to a very good business school as well, as I'm sure you're well aware. So Paige, welcome to UNH. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. All right, next up, before we go back to Coach Hogan, let's bring in the Director of Athletics, Marty Scarano. Marty, so many questions. People want to know when's the first game? What can you tell us? I'm sure you have all the answers there in the corner office. Did we lose Marty already? I gave you his great lead-in, and he's already walked away, huh? I got you. you see there me? we go. All yeah, right. I, I, you have all the answers, right? Oh, yeah, of course. I've been telling people for, for months to include all my coaches and some of the athletes. There's a lot of questions, and unfortunately, we don't have a lot of answers. But the one thing I would say, I'd reiterate what Kelsey said and, and some of the ladies that uh, we've all done a great job. I am enormously proud of this university and our athletic staff, coaches, and athletes. We, we have a very low incident rate right now. Everyone's following the protocols. I think the student athletes are acting as great role models on campus and uh, we'll get through this. You know, you don't want to ever get ahead of yourself in regard to COVID because as soon as you say something, then it reminds you that it's very complicated. But the fact is, I, I think UNH has given itself a really, really good chance of, of hopefully getting through this semester, getting these athletes on the court and getting the rest of our athletes in their respective sports. It was a month ago today, as I said at the introduction, that Kelsey Hogan was officially named the head coach. She was the interim head coach going back to April. You've known her for more than a decade now, and I, I asked Kelsey Hogan why she was the selection, but I think yeah. it's more important to ask the director of athletics why Coach Hogan is the right choice. Well, we've all said it, and, and some of the athletes said it. She stands for everything that's good about UNH. But the fact of the matter is, and I said this in the press conference, that you know we, I go way back with Kelsey. I think she was 17 years old on her first visit when I might have met her. Um, but I told her before we embarked on a national search, we had decided we were going to do this the right way, that this was an open competition. She had to win the job and she absolutely stole it. Um, she didn't take anything for granted. I, my respect level for Kelsey has grown twofold because of this search, because she won this job. She didn't take anything for granted. She was well prepared in all the interviews. And by far, she was the best candidate. If we had not known Kelsey Hogan, she would have still won this job. So that just says volumes about the person that she is. Of course, I knew that. I also said, right, Kelsey, that I had complete confidence you were going to win the job. But I think it's important to know she could have lost that opportunity too, and she did not. So she's going to be a fabulous coach, I hope, for an awfully long time at UNH. Um, but I'm really excited about her starting her, her tenure here and getting these ladies on the court. And certainly we don't know when the season will start, but I'm only speaking for me, but I'd like your opinion. Now that the students are back on campus and they're getting into the building, my optimism increases quite a bit. You know, the summer was a long summer. There were so many things and there's uncertainty, but do you have more of an optimistic feel that yes, we, we can get these seasons underway when, how they'll look may be different than usual, but I'm starting to feel pretty good, Mark. I do. I do. I think that it's the scary proposition is each school is individual depending on where they're at and what their protocols are. I mean, we all read the athletic news out there and there have been some shocking examples of schools that you think that did things the right way haven't. That's not to say that we're doing everything the right way, but we're trying like heck. Um, I will say this, if we continue to do what we're doing and the athletes continue to do the right things, we will be on the court. I don't know when. Tomorrow, the NCAA Division I Council votes on the four scenarios. My guess is going to be that they're going to say that they are inclined to want to start mid to late November. I mean, Kelsey might remember the date. I think the one date on the calendar is November 25th. That aligns with what we want to do. I was on hockey calls today. So as I've said to my two basketball coaches and my two hockey coaches, they're on the clock as far as I'm concerned to mean the athletes on this Zoom are, are basically in preseason, unlike a lot of our other athletes who are on a real holding pattern, right? The fall sport athletes, they don't know if they're going to play in the spring. They certainly want to. We're getting them in the weight room. They're going to get out to practice. But the fact is, the ladies on this call, as far as I'm concerned, are in preseason. And here we are after 7 o'clock, and it's getting dark outside. So you get that feel that fall yep. is coming in the, in the season. So. Uh, Marty, as always, thank you for the insight. Well, it seems every time we have you on, there's more updates. So appreciate you taking some thank time. Thank you, Mike. All right, back to Coach Hogan. Coach, you know, I know it's important for you. Uh, we have alums on the call. Alums will watch this in perpetuity afterward. Getting reengaged with alumni, 
you are one, you know a lot over the last 10 years, but how do you plan to re-engage those people who went to UNH maybe decades ago who have not been part of the picture for a while? Well, first off, um, with being a proud alum, alumni engagement is huge and it's really important to me. And I think it's highly important to the success of this program moving forward. Um, Cause I don't think it, there's a program or a successful program without alums. So we go hand in hand. Um, so for me, it's highly important moving forward. Um, and it's doing more, honestly, engagements like as simple as this. Uh, we also are starting a mentorship program too. And with our mentorship program, it's connecting our current student athletes with our alums, um, trying to engage our alums back, get them excited back, uh, make, they, make them again feel valued and make them feel excited and special um, because it is, it's, an ex, it's a special network of being a UNH Women's Basketball alum. Um, so trying to really gain their interest and excitement back to the program too of just little um, engagement points like this and the mentorship program as I mentioned. Um, for, for me, and I talk about that network, um, but for us moving forward to like our, we have a family, um, our current student athletes, they're my second family moving forward. And with that, I want them to know that that network and that system and that family bond isn't just for the, isn't just for the four years that they're at school. Um, it's a lifelong bond moving forward. And that's kind of what I also too want to express to our alums too moving forward that it's a bond that we all are going to share uh, for the rest of our lives. And it's Murph, it's what you said, right first from the get-go, once a wildcat, always a wildcat. That's our motto right now. That's our motto moving forward. It's that special bond. Um, so always making sure they feel appreciated and connected back to this special network and the special program. And say what we will about Zoom fatigue, and there is a lot of that, but for alumni events, and my guess is between now and when the season starts, we could do another one. We would never have thought of what Zoom is because it's different than being on a conference call. We're seeing each other, talking to each other. Zoom does have that ability for alums who have moved far away and can't make it back to campus. Uh, Murph, I tell you, it's been great. Um, one of my assistants here, who another is a proud alum, Peyton Booth, she can attest to that, but we have done um, just even generational Zooms, trying to, uh, just to check in how everyone is doing and, and catch up with how everyone's family um, is doing, even just, we did it early too with COVID. And the check-ins, I, I think, went great. Uh, we had some alums on that we haven't heard from in years and, and a lot that weren't in the same time zone. Um, we had a couple alums that were waking up um, in England and just coming on. And, and I tell you, they set their alarm too to wake up to our six o'clock. It was six o'clock here. So I guess midnight or one o'clock there. And, and they were just engaged. And I tell you that engagement point of just hearing their favorite memories too at UNH um, and have them also just to see their teammates who they haven't seen in a while. That's what it's all about. Just to see their excitement um, and, and be like, oh my gosh, that's so-and-so. I haven't seen or heard from you in so long. To me, that's what it's all about. Um, of course, as I said, I want them connected back to this program. I want them to feel valued, but it, it's also them reconnecting with teammates. That's so special to me. Um, and moving forward, I don't know if we're probably ever going to stop Zooming because it's just an easy way that we all can connect. Um, I talked about that mentorship program and, and we have some amazing alums that have um, put up their time and want to give back to our current student athletes who are pairing them up actually currently. And that's kind of been a, a season pay and boost kind of job, I guess, baby in that sense. Um, she's taken that kind of program head on. She's doing a phenomenal job with that. Um, but it's an easy way for alums to still stay connected with their current student athletes. And unfortunately, they won't meet face to face with the mentorship program, but at least they can do this. They can be on the call. Uh, I tell you, we're even thinking about someday doing some like interview mock trials type of thing. Um, so some mock interviews and then have it, do be, have it be via Zoom. So there's a lot that I think we're going to continue to use this moving forward, especially with our alums. Well, I think the current athletes we've talked to today did a great job in the interview process, so they'll, they'll be great in those mock interviews. But how about just engagement with the community as a whole? All right, well, we see the 2020-21 Wildcats on campus, out in the community, because you want people to get to know 
the student athletes who are your Wildcats. Yeah, community um, outreach and getting out in the community is huge for me. Um, I talked about myself being a proud alum, but I'm also a proud New Hampshire native, uh, born and raised. And so for me, it's, it's getting our young ladies who are strong female leaders, leaders for the future and getting them out into the community to even, as Paige talked about, showing the youth uh, what, what, what hard work can get you to and beyond. Um, so getting all these young leaders out in the community, um, being just great, honestly, role models uh, to the youth is really big for me. Um, and even moving forward too with what is going on in our world, if, if we can get out there and, um, you know, be the change and do the right thing, then, then let's be it. We have a platform, so to use it. Um, so that's, that's a really big part. And it's not even just the Seacoast area, it's the university, just to make sure we're, we're staying engaged and getting involved. Um, but also too, I mean, I'm from Nashville, New Hampshire. Uh, it's one of the cities in New Hampshire and I wanna try to get out that way, Manchester, and, and try to kind of hit all around New Hampshire. Um, and try to get that community uh, outreach because that's, that's a big uh, emphasis that I have moving forward. I'm a big believer in that. Um, and we are going to be kind of ambassadors of change and, and big community members moving forward. So the Kelsey Hogan era is underway in a unique way. We certainly thank you for this evening. Uh, people get a chance to learn more about you. They learn about so many of your athletes. We thank Marty Scarano, Amanda Torres, Ivy Goglin, Faith Monet, Elena De La Ruel, Paige Cody. Whew, and we're just getting started. So many more players. Coach, I'm sure we'll do it again right before the season starts to get people really acclimated about the basketball part of it. But it's been a lot of fun, so thank you so much. Thank you all. I really appreciate you joining in. Go Cats! <laughs>